We made this hard video but then we stopped. So now I'm back making this video for you. Today we are going to watch a video that's going to help you learn about the part of your body that's letting you watch and understand this video right now. The Okay, why can't I say it right? Oh yes. The the brain. Yeah, that was good this time. So Anyway, today we are going to talk about in this five parts video series. We are going to in part one or this video, we are going to talk uh, talk about the anatomy of the brain and some little things about how what what they do. Now we are going to talk about the three main parts of the brain, starting from number one, the cerebellum, right on your top neck. You can actually feel it if you touch it. Well, it's not exactly touch it, but <laughs> <laughs> put your hand behind neck and press. You can feel it a bit. The second is right in the middle of your throat. Okay, fine. I don't want to choke myself, but it's right in the middle of my throat and it connects to my spinal cord and it's called the brain stem also known as the encephalic trunk. Now is the biggest part of your brain. It covers three-fourths of your brain and also known as 85% of the total volume of your brain, but let's just get to what it's called and all the other stuff. It's called the cerebrum, or it's bigger than my head. Like, it's so big, like, I'll just trace it, I guess. Like, yeah, that big, if you get it. And it, as I already told you, it covers most of the brain. Now we're going to, it's also known as the brain cortex. Now we're going to talk about a little bit of their functions. First, the cerebellum. Cerebellum controls balance, movement, and coordination. So like, if you're falling off a cliff, the cerebellum rebalances you and you don't go, ah, and then you break your head or something. No, the cerebellum rebalances you so you don't break your foot. And there is a tool behind that, and it's your ears. Believe it or not, it's your ears. Look, as you see, the ear has three tubes. Well, they're not exactly tubes, but they're small canals in your inner ear that are loops and they're at different angles and they're filled of fluid. And at the bottom and around them, on the sides of those tubes, if you get it, they have tiny little hairs. Well, they're not exactly hairs. They're a type of cell called cilia. And what happens is those cilia detect the movement of the fluid. So let's say I move my head like this. So the fluid moves and that moves the cilia. And now the cilia sends a message, an electrical signal to your, you guessed it, your cerebellum. And your cerebellum translates that and understands that. And if you're falling off a cliff, if that's what your ear tells you, your cerebellum tells you to put your leg there and unfall off that cliff if you get it. Now we're going to talk about the brainstem, also known as the encephalic trunk. This is a very vital part. And what it does is it controls lots of things like digesting, breathing, blood, pumping blood, etc. Just all the things that you don't need to be conscious about to do. Like you don't need to be conscious about to breathe. So it does all those stuff, like, you know, what I just said. 
Now the brain cortex. I call this like the complexest part of your brain. After all, it is the biggest. So this brain cortex, what it does is it does like a lot of things. I can't even name them all. It does the thinking, it does the memory, it does the emotions, and does the hormone control. And those all happen by little parts in it. Now we're going to talk about the four major parts of the cerebrum, which are the frontal lobe. And the frontal lobe is mostly contains the prefrontal cortex. And that, my friends, is very complex for one reason. It does all the cognitive thinking and like the decision making. So it does the planning, the emotions, actually a bit of the emotions, not all, but yeah, because it contains the amygdala, which is another part, which we're going to talk about in the third episode, which is all about emotions. We're going to do that episode and well, it's the emotions. So you'll learn more about the amygdala there. Now the parietal lobe. The parietal lobe is located right here and it's very embedded in the senses. So it controls almost all of the senses. So now there's the occipital lobe. It's just located right here. It's right here. It's like just above the cerebellum, like right a little above the cerebellum. I don't think so you can feel it. To the occipital lobe. That is very like embedded in visual things. In fact, your optic nerve connects directly to it. Now the temporal lobe. It controls your memory. Yeah, its main thing is your memory because it controls the hippocampus, which we're going to talk about mostly in the second episode, which is all about memory. Now we're going to talk about some myths and facts about two parts of the brain that are very commonly known. The left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. But these parts hide something that not most people know. And it's something that they're connected by called the corpus callosum, also known as hard body. But let's get back to their functions. The left hemisphere is good at calculating speech and reasoning. So that's the left ear. It's like the critical thinking part, like the logical part. And the right hemisphere is more creative. It does the intuition, the creativity, as I said, the music and the art. It does all the creative things mostly. But one more twist up or facty twist up is that your right hemisphere controls your left body and your left bo hemisphere controls your le left, I mean, right body. That's a tongue twister, I can't even say it yet. And now let's talk about a few more deeper parts, like deeper inside brain important parts, or like whatever you call them. Should we make a short for that? No, leave all of that. Let's just talk about them. Number one on the list is your prefrontal cortex. That's like right about here and it's located in your frontal lobe, which is located in the cerebrum and you know, what's the role. So this is the prefrontal cortex. Like It's right here. If you understand where I'm putting my hand, it's like right behind my forehead. So, what it does is, I think I already told you this, but it does lots of cognitive thinking and decision making, and even does some emotional things, like some emotions. But, and it also stores a lot, like very complex memories, so it's kind of a very important part, I would say. And I would say it's kind of strongly unique to humans, because unique, I mean, humans have a kind of uniquely strong prefrontal cortex, I would say, compared to other animals, because I would say we are the most complex of species. I mean, in a brain structure, yes. 
Next, we're going to talk about the pituitary gland and the hypothalamus and their friendship. I mean, well, you'll understand that later on or right now in a few minutes. So, what's the friendship between the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland? It's pretty simple. They both are in the hormone business. They're both in the hormone business in your body. They control the hormones. They sell the hormones in your body. They tell your thyroid glands to produce these hormones. They tell, and they even produce some hormones themselves. Like the pituitary gland, it produces your growth hormone. And some people that have a problem with their pituitary gland, they get, they're what you call the giants or the tiny little people. Like, I don't know what they're called, but I don't want to make fun of them, but that's what's wrong with them. The pituitary gland is not working all right. And the hypothalamus is like the boss of the pituitary gland. It's like the CEO of the hormones company in your body. It tells it what to do, tells it what hormones to produce, and it works with other companies too, or other parts. Now we're going to talk about the amygdala, the emotional center. It doesn't control all of the emotions, but it's pretty important. It controls fear and, um, yeah, fear, scariness, and mostly all the other emotions, but there's the, you know, as we talked about, the prefrontal cortex. It controls some complex emotions. Okay, but the amygdala controls most of the emotions. Okay, and the brain stem, we already talked about that. Now the hippocampus. The hippocampus is the memory part. It, you know, does both of the memories, but the prefrontal cortex and amygdala also store them like memories, but hippocampus is the big player or the big company in the memory business in our body. So, and the cerebellum, we already talked about that. So, yeah. Now we're going to talk about the basal ganglia. Weird name, weird structure too. If you see in like some brain books, it looks like totally out of this world. It looks like a giant glob or like a giant jellyfish with square holes ripped into the top of it. I mean, I don't know how to describe it, just out of this world. It controls your movement and reward. The movement thing, it works with the cerebellum and a part called the motor cortex, which is really in your movement stuff. It works with the motor cortex and the, you know, the cerebellum to do all of that. And there's the thalamus. The thalamus might be as small as your finger, but might control like, okay, fine. I don't know how to say it, but it's just very important. Thalamus does lots of things. It's an input output base. Like, it takes in information through your senses and then it outputs them wherever they need to. It even processes them. It even sends signals to other, um, you know, other parts. Like, it's also like the platform, you know, like the switch on the railway gates and then they turn it to make it go where the train should go. It's like that. It sends the signals where they should be going after maybe processing them a bit. And it does lots of other things too. It's a sensory gateway basically. Now, we know all these parts, but now we're going to learn about how they communicate. And the main cell in all of the brain, also known as the gray matter that you might have heard in neurology books and other things. Well, yeah, we're going to talk about that. What the gray matter really is. So, now I'll tell you the secret of how they communicate. By electrical signals. Yeah, the brain produces enough electricity to light a mini, like, bulb. But I wouldn't prefer sticking one in your head to test it. <laughs> okay, so anyway. Yeah, just don't stick one in your head. That's uh, for sure. And mm, yeah, 
So now we're going to talk about how they communicate with those electrons with a special type of cell called neurons. Neurons are the smallest cells in your body, like one micron, I guess, something like that. That's very small. But, I mean, yeah. And they communicate by electrical signals. They have two things. Actually, they're kind of different, but most of all of them have two things. They have the cell body, and then they have this extension called the axle, and then they have the loop. Like, I mean, you could imagine them like a giant robot with a, like a blob head, and then with like a thin cylinder like body with with legs that look like spaghetti or also known as dendrites. The spaghetti legs of them are called dendrites. If you're gonna go in the world of brain facts, brain facts on. <laughs> okay, anyway. So, one brain fact. The brain, an adult brain weighs about three pounds, and a kid brain like mine weighs, I think, 2.5 pounds. And then mine brain is about the size of, you know, damn, like a, I don't know, one and a half apricots or something. About the size of that. And the adult brain is, well, if you tell your dad to just put your arms like this, or your hands like this, you'll get how big it is. So, anyway, yeah. And the biggest brain an animal has ever had is of a sperm wheel. 17 pounds, people. 17 pounds. That's a lot. But the most coolest, amazingest, Awesomest brain in the world is the human brain. Da -da 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 go human brain. <laughs> Fine, there's no like brain invasion happening and brains are attacking brains. No, no. So let's just ignore all that fancy and get to the real world. Another fun fact about the brain is that the messages that your brain, the electrical messages that your brain send, cruise along. On your nerves, more than 260 miles per hour. That is holy cow fast. I know, it's uh, cool, right? Just to get like what 260 mph means, or faster than it, you're talking about the speed of a Boeing 737. That is crazy cool. <laughs> I know. And that is all for brain effects. And all for this video. Now I'll meet you in part two of the brain. The brain.